What's up, y'all, and welcome into the Jack Vita Show. I am your host, as always, Jack Vita. We had a terrific time last week with a pair of lovely ladies competing on Snake in the Grass. We spoke with Stephanie Kendrick and Sari Fields, and today we're joined by a couple more lovely ladies, this time from the Big Brother side of reality TV. We had two Survivor Legends on. Now we got the Big Brother Legends on. And we are so excited to talk with them today. They've combined for a total of six seasons of Big Brother together. Uh, multiple, let's see, four total amazing race appearances between the two of them and some other appearances along the way as well. So I don't want to waste any more time. We only have so much time with them. First, let me welcome in our first guest. Uh, it's Rachel Riley. She's uh, the Big Brother winner. And we're so great to have her here. Thank you, Jack. And that was like some some interview introduction. Thank you for that. I feel very uh, well versed in television appearances. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. And of course, also joining us, another fan favorite from the show, uh, four time Big Brother contestant, also competing yes. on The Amazing Race. Janelle, is it Pierzina hey, or Perzina? It's Per. It's Perzina. Per, Perzina. Yes. Is that Italian? It's actually Polish. Polish. Oh, yeah, I'm Polish. Very cool. Now, yeah. Janelle, many people know you from Big Brother. Some know you from The Amazing Race. Yes. But of course, I know you from the 2002 classic film, Like Mike, as <laughs> cheerleader oh number God. 13. I love it. That's so OG. That's like, those are my MySpace days, okay? <laughs> yes. Please t tell me the story of being working on Like Mike. That was my favorite movie <laughs> as a kid. And you know what? My kids love that movie. They could not believe I'm in a basketball movie. My son loves basketball. He's like, you're not in a basketball movie. I'm like, actually, I'm a cheerleader. I am. <laughs> and I showed him the movie and he was like, his mind was literally blown. He was like, whoa. Um, yeah, it was super fun, though. I, again, I was a cheerleader in high school and they needed cheerleaders that were like NBA style cheerleaders. So I was like, yes, I will definitely do this movie. And it paid really well. So yeah, it was fun. Were you in all of the basketball scenes or just some of them? Um, I'm at the Staples Center in like the first two big scenes. Yeah, I, don't, I, I saw think. you, you can, you, if you guys are wondering and you want to watch Like Mike, you can see Janelle. I think, <laughs> I'm pretty sure this is Janelle it's when me. they're doing the raffle yes. to find out which uh, fan gets to play Tracy Reynolds one on one, and you see Janelle shaking her pom poms like this, <laughs> right, me. right behind uh, <laughs> Eugene Levy or Levy. Yep. Oh my gosh, what a movie! And yeah. Janelle, so were you out in LA trying to be an actress for a little while? I was. I actually left Minnesota at a very young age. So way before Big Brother, I was an actress and a model. So I did like tons of modeling, um, magazines, commercials. I was in movies. And then when I gave all that up, because I came to a certain point, I was like, I don't really want to do this anymore. Like, it's just such a grind, you know, that yeah. industry. And so I was like, I'm going to move out to Miami and just like live on the beach and just live my best life. And then like a year went by and I was like, you know what? I should go try and win some freaking money on a reality <laughs> show. Yes. Because I already did TV stuff and I was like, I mean, I killed it in the audition because they were like, there's no way. Like, what are you doing here? And I was like, yes, I want to win Big Brother. And they're like, OK, cool. So I got on a season that was in 2005. And you, I know you're from Minnesota. I'm a fellow Midwesterner as well. Nice. Yes. I love the Midwest. So I'm back living the Midwest now in Great. Minneapolis. Do I yeah. sound like a Midwesterner to you guys? Like, no, no, not at all. I, Rachel. I would Pennsylvania. Pennsylvania. Interesting. I would have said Colorado. Colorado. Wow. That's new. Interesting. <laughs> I, a lot of people tell, so I'm from Chicago. A lot of people okay. say I kind of sound like an Indiana person. You don't have the Chicago bark for sure. No, no, I don't. I don't. Yeah. It's like, yeah. But anyway, you had a, you have a very interesting IMDB Janelle. And so do yes. you, Rachel. Rachel, you've done some acting as well. Haven't you? I have. Yes. But my, well, I did modeling like Janelle before I did Big Brother. Um, and then that was one of the reasons why I ended up at my open call for Big Brother. I was a huge fan of the show, obviously. But um, I had just, been, like, I was uh, Miss Sturges. <laughs> and I was like, I know, so silly. And then I was like doing all these Hawaiian Tropic things. 
so I found out about the open call from um, one of the modeling, like one of the people I'd worked with in modeling. They're like, they're doing this Big Brother. Aren't you a Big Brother fan? I was like, the biggest. And they were like, oh, they're doing an open call at Hard Rock. And I was like, oh, my gosh, I have to go. Um, so then, you know, fate had it that Robin Cass was at my open call. And I tell everyone, and I work in casting now, too. So I tell everyone. If you're going to go to an open call and you have a chance, you want to be on the show, I think it's the best way to uh, get yourself in front of the casting directors because <laughs> you know you don't know what casting director will be at the open calls. And even if it's just local and it's like the local casting personalities, I think it's important to be to get yourself in front of them because they're going to be able to like, you know, see your video and then they'll remember you. So I just think it's important to go to if you can go to open calls, they're doing them again that you you go to an open call i don't know i, I also did an open call same thing open call yes so that's the way to do it if i want to go on one of these shows yeah i i think so if janelle went to an open call and i went to an open call then go to an open call <laughs> <laughs> do you guys think that reality tv people make good actors or actresses or no i think you have to so I did reality and then I went into doing some acting. I got the opportunity to go on. To, and I've been in movies now. I've been in like the bold and the beautiful a bunch. And I think that you have to take it seriously because it is a craft. It's totally different than being on reality TV. And if you want to like, you know, take the time and go to the classes and learn what you need to do to be successful as an actor, then yes. I mean, you, Sure, reality people make great actors because they're probably already dramatic and doing this anyway. <laughs> but like, yeah. yeah, but you know, I mean, you do have to learn how to be able to act. It's not just like memorizing a script and showing up. You have to be able to be in the moment. And that's something we learn in reality TV is how to be in the moment. So yes, it does train you, but it's also not, it's not the only, you can't just like show up and say, hey, I did, you know, Big Brother. So, you know, put me in the next, sci-fi film like that's not gonna happen so janelle first take me through a day in the life of the big brother house because i mean you've been on it four times are you sleeping <laughs> yeah. like 12 hours a day no so it's changed it's evolved so i have an interesting thing because i've done big brothers in my 20s my 30s and now my 40s so all of those have been different experiences as a young adult, a young mother, and now like a busy mother with like elementary school children and like a full blown career. So I felt like the last time I did Big Brother, which was an all stars cast, that was very exhausting um, because I was 40 and I was like, it's changed so much because when you're 20, first of all, they've changed the rules. You, I, yes. When I was in my twenties, I absolutely did marathon sleepings. It's like the best I've ever slept in my life. Like, I mean, I'm talking like 18 hours a day I would sleep, but now they have this new rule where there's no sleeping in the middle of the day. So I was like very, very exhausted. They want to make more TV last... out of you guys. And if you sleep, then there's less for them to film. Correct. So now the it's like harder and it's just harder on me physically. <laughs> I was like, Oh my God. I was so exhausted during my last season. I was like, this is exhausting because it's filming every single day. Well, Go ahead, Rachel. And I was going to say, and you, they, you have to stay up until like 4 a.m. because they all stay up until like 4 a.m. It's crazy. Mm -hmm. I remember on season 13, I would go to sleep at like 2 a.m. And that was early. It was like yeah. insane because people want to stay up the entire night. I don't know if it's part of like the excitement from being there or just like, you want to make sure that you're always in the conversations or what, but the house guests want to stay up so late. It's like, it blows my mind how late they can actually stay up. Well, I'm 28 when I was mm -hmm. 20 or 21. Like I love staying up till like three or 4 AM when I was in college yes. to be like, yeah, all right, whatever. I'll just, I'll just totally. stay up till four, do my homework at the last yes. minute and then get up at nine and that's fine. And now I'm 28 and I'm just like, I, I want to go to bed at 10 PM. Like I just, that's not oh, yeah. appealing to me anymore. So you get a younger cast on big brother. That could be something that plays into it. Yeah. Cause I remember staying up till 6 AM almost every single night with my, my 25 year old castmates, you know, and then the old people were sleeping. And then eventually I became an old person that went to bed at eight in the big brother house. I mean, it's so embarrassing. So How on All-Stars, were they up until 4 a.m.? Like the younger ones on All-Stars? Mm -hmm. 
later, like, I mean, that was an older cast. I would yeah. say, I mean, David, yeah, he was up. They, those people that were like 28 and stuff, they were up late. I was, me and Case were always in our room, like yeah. literally just exhausted. I was like, oh my God, I can't believe we're 40 and we're back in this room. Ah. <laughs> and how do you keep yourself from eating like six meals a day? Because that would be the hardest thing for me. I just, I'm <laughs> bored. I want to keep eating. Yeah. I mean, that, I definitely had a weight gain season six for <laughs> sure. That was my first season. Cause I was like, oh my God. Plus I went in there like super tiny and I was like, oh my God, there's food all the time. Cause I was used to just like living on my own, just having like a couple oranges and some eggs in the fridge every day. <laughs> and big brother is like a smorgasbord. So um, you can really get carried away there with all the food. So oh, yeah. I did a lot of cooking though. I think the food restrictions now though they do food restrictions which really like balance everything out because i did have to do a week of slop in the big brother house and i mean that's like you will lose weight on that diet because all you can eat is oatmeal for a week that doesn't sound too fun to me no lie. it was gross <laughs> now i can you... wait in season 12 from uh not exercising as much so like yes. also oh. because you just you're stand, you're sitting around like in normal world pre-covid we would like you know go out and walk and go to the mall whatever you're do you're doing stuff getting in yeah. ten thousand steps a day is easy now like in big brother you're not walking as much you don't have anywhere to go you're not like commuting you're not driving somewhere to like right. walk somewhere so it just you're just you know more sedentary yes now the show and the world has changed quite a bit since the first time you guys were on Big Brother. Social media is huge now. People can basically just hear anything you say, yes. take it out of context, and then totally. start an angry mob against you if you don't if they don't like you. Um, how have you guys seen how have you seen it change? I guess that's my that's my question. Oh, I've absolutely seen it change. But but the world has changed. I mean, 20 years ago, what you would say is different now. If you said that today, they would be having a witch hunt. You know what I'm saying? Like the slightest thing will set people off and they're just after you before. I mean, 20 years ago, it was different. There, It was a different time. So yes, things have changed. I mean, now I just feel bad. I honestly feel bad for the new people that go on there because I'm yeah. like, you could even be hanging out with the wrong person and then you're considered just garbage. Yeah. And, and you're, these people understand, like, they're, you're playing a game on strategy. Like, if the the worst person in the world is going to get me to the end and win me 500000 like, you best believe I will be, like, working with them and strategizing. Like, I don't really care, you know? Um, but some of the newer people on these new seasons, I just feel bad for them because it's like a freaking witch hunt. Yeah. Well, also, like, the Twitter, I noticed that... Um the Twitter has more influence on how the show is edited now. Whereas in the past, I feel that the editors were more, or the show, the producers, the editors, it was more organic, like what they wanted. Yes. Yes. Now it feels like whatever is going on in the media or in on Twitter, like we are seeing that in the episodes. And now that can be a good thing. But it can also be a, a weird thing because now it's like, the fans are really having more of an impact on Big Brother than ever before. Um, so I don't think we're ever going to have a Big Brother season like when Janelle played or even when no, I No, when you can just like get in someone's face and tell them they're a piece of <laughs> Sorry, I know it's PG. Um, you know, like just be authentic and real with people and tell them what you think and not offend. Like everything's yeah. so offensive. Everything. Yeah. Like, you know, like even if I were having an argument with another woman and I just felt like, you know, I want to, I want to get down to this and I want to tell you what I feel and I want to be straight up. Some people might take that as bullying. Some people might take that as, you know, I'm pushing too many buttons and I'm attacking her. So, I mean, it's just different. I still don't think though that the big brother fans on Twitter are the majority. That's it's literally no. like 2% of the watchers, yeah. which is yeah. just stupid for them to, go by what these tweens and teens say, because yeah. at the end of the day, the fans that have been there since when I first did the show 20 years ago, those are the the fans that love the show that keep coming back year after year. 
I think those fans are probably on Facebook, but <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, I don't get it because to me, it's like, it's reality TV. It's supposed to be yeah. real authentic, it is. maybe a little dirty, maybe yes. not pretty. Um, we want the conflicts. We want to yes. see Rachel getting in arguments with people like that's great TV, in my opinion. 100%. And I think that I, I'm totally with you. I think that that small percentage is ruining reality TV as a whole. Yeah. Yeah. And I want to say it all started with season 16. I know a lot of people, what, they're like, oh my God, Janelle, don't say this. It's true. When Frankie Grande came on that season, he brought all these tweens with him. <laughs> and they started watching the show. Like, it's their show now. And I'm like, you guys, it's not your show. Like, <laughs> it's just not. Like, there's people that are 40 that watch this. So just shut it. Yeah. Well, well and it's funny because we were talking about in a podcast, on my podcast about the show, um, we were talking about how like even Indy when she was evicted, like she wasn't playing for $750,000. She was just playing to be on big brother. Yeah. And right. it was like, it's so infuriating because that's what we're getting. And yeah. that's the people when they're going in that house, even if they say they're there to win the money and casting, once they get through that door and once they're in the house, they're just playing to be on television, yep. to be on social media, so they can be influencers. So they can be, be popular. Like, popular. They want to do whatever they think, like, you know, their her opinions changed from this, like, it was like one indie three days before that we were seeing on live feeds. And then as soon as she was evicted and realized everyone loved Taylor, now it's this indie who is like, I love Taylor too. So I think it's just like one of those things where people are not being as authentic as they could be and they're not there to win the seven hundred and fifty thousand dollars and i think it is across the board for different reality shows as well we're seeing it on the bachelor we're seeing it happen on yeah i will tell you i didn't on snake in the grass that was not the case we played that game yeah like, oh, yeah yeah because we're ogs and because we're, that's what i was gonna say because we're ogs we want to be there we want to win the money we want to like play the game and i think like that's something you're going to see different between the types of players that are getting cast on the shows now. Yeah. And I think is... that's why they've been like re having like the OGs come back. To yeah. <laughs> Cause they're like, dude, like I can't handle these like 25 year olds or whatever that just want to go sell, you know, slim baby tea or whatever it is. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. For Janelle, you played in 2020. 2020 yeah. was just such a, an insanely stressful year. It felt like yes. every it felt like every, every single day. It's not going to get crazier in this world, and it does. And I was just curious, what was like your state of mind being in the house, being so disconnected from that? Did you have more anxiety about like, oh my gosh, I just hope everything's okay, or was it like, you know what, this is kind of a nice break to not have to be tuned into this all the time? And then did that also impact, do you think, how people talked in the house with the live feeds and all that? You know, honestly, when I got called for it, I was, you know, because I had been on lockdown, you know, I've got three kids I'm doing the distance learning. The call was actually a pleasant surprise for me, I will say, because I was like, life's rough. You know, I, I'm sitting here trying to school children. I don't know what I'm doing. And I sell a bunch of real estate and, you know, I don't know. It was just a mess. So I'm like this actually sounds really cool because the state of the world, like where things are, I think it would be interesting just to take myself all away from that. And I knew I probably would be a, a really big target right away. And I wouldn't last that long, which was true. But I was like, even if it's just for a few weeks to just remove myself and do this, I think it could be cool. And they did have me quarantined for two weeks before season 20. And I will say that was the best two weeks that I've spent <laughs> in the last 10 years because, um, well, I went on a whole 30 diet and I had like this menu for them that they could shop for. And I lost like eight pounds in this quarantine. I'm like, this is great. And then it was just so cool to just like shut everything off and not have my phone and not play the game for two weeks. It was like a really nice thing because usually they never have done that before where you get like so much time before the game. That's sweet. Does that sound good to you, Rachel? Oh, she's frozen. Rach? Okay, <laughs> she she'll go? she'll be back. She'll pop in here again. Um, <laughs> let's see. Uh, what else should I ask you, Janelle? That sounds really cool, though. By the way, 
That was super cool. I love. I absolutely loved doing twenty. I didn't. I mean, I didn't care for some of the people they cast because I'm like, what the heck? This is supposed to be all stars, but it's all good. <laughs> oh, you know what? I heard that you had some thoughts about the Challenge USA. Yeah. So, you know, I was asked to do that show, and I was like, oh my god, why didn't this come out twenty years ago? You know, I would have won that show <laughs> twenty years ago because I was so athletic. And I'm like, oh my god. I kind of just like had a little bit of FOMO where I'm like, fear of missing out. Like that looks so fun. I had so many friends that did it and it just, you know, I'm a competitor. So I'm like, that looks fun. And I said no, because I actually did get COVID in January of 2021 and I got really, really sick and I had to be on steroids for like Ugh. nine months. And I just wasn't, I just wasn't healthy enough to go and, do these hardcore challenges for like a month in Argentina. I just felt like it's season one. They'll call me for season two if they want me. And like, I'll just see where I'm at physically, you know? And now that you're watching it, are you like, yes, I want to do this if they do this again. So there's, yeah, I mean, I'm just a competitor. So I'm like, oh my God, I could have done like certain challenges. I see, I'm like, oh my God, I would totally like, I would have won that one. I would have <laughs> won it. And then others, I'm like, ooh, that looks like a little freaky. Like, I'm not into, like, you know, propelling from the air and, like, jumping on things and jumping over water. Like, you know, fear heights a little bit. So, I don't know. I'm I'm definitely interested in possibly doing it if they call again, though. Rachel, are you back? I'm back. I don't – can you see me or no? Can't see you, but that's we okay. We can't see you. We're talking so Challenge sorry. USA. Have you watched yeah. it? Do you like it? Uh, so – Yes and no. I I watch, watch it. I'm watching it. And I do enjoy watching it. It's very entertaining. However, I think it's also kind of boring because I'm really disappointed in the, like, I don't think people are really playing the game as much as they could yeah. be. Like, yeah. it's just like, I'm not sure. They're like going into competitions. They're showing up. But then that's it. Like, it's almost like they're just hanging out doing competitions. Yeah. <laughs> yeah there's not a lot of drama, which no. surprises me. Right. There's no drama. And, but not only is there no drama, there's also like the way that people are interacting with each other. They're not like, we're not seeing these, like they say they're in alliances or whatever, but like, we're not really seeing alliances. We're not really seeing people actually playing a strategic game at all. It's just, it just seems like they're really showing up doing challenges and like, you know, that's it basically. Yeah. And Angela and Tyson are just kind of like running the show. Which <laughs> like is from day one. It's like, is anyone going to even yeah. take a shot? What the heck? No, I know. It's so weird. Right. And then it, we, it's just like, people are just like, you know, going, they're just kind of doing whatever they're, whatever kind of happens, like the roll with the dice. It's almost like nobody's playing the game they're just like rolling right. the dice and if they're saying they're saying if they don't stay then they're like okay thanks for having me it's it's, it's bizarre to me because they're cast they cast some really good competitors but yeah. you know but they also didn't at the same point too rachel i feel yes. like the cast could have been a little bit better like tyson a lot better absolutely angela absolutely yeah. tiffany all-star cast but like some of the cast that they threw in there i'm like why why is that oh, person 100%. there yeah a hundred percent i mean even like you know david god bless him but like david honestly, taking out yeah like why david like i don't i still can't understand the david factor because i don't think he's like a challenge beast and like even leo like i mean i love leo honest to god but like you know it's just leo for me i would have expected more because he was he was good at competitions on yeah. amazing Race. he and was he great we played with him time. yeah we yeah. played with him and like he's i just feel like leo is you know, hanging out and it doesn't, I don't, I'm not seeing the Leo that we know because he's not winning competitions, but he's also like, people are saying they don't want to be his partner. Like, that's so weird to me. Cause I'm like, I would, if I was Leo's partner on amazing race, I would have loved it. Yeah. Me so, too. I would love him as a partner. Yeah. I would love me? him as a partner. So I don't understand what we're not seeing, but it's weird. I don't yeah. know. It's weird. Yeah, the two things for me, number one, I thought the cast was weak. I'll be blunt. I mean, I just thought I didn't watch last year's Big Brother. I didn't watch last right. year's Survivor. So I think if you really wanted people to buy in, they needed to bring. I know Janelle got the call. I, Rachel, did you get the call for this one? 
I did. Yeah. Okay. So you turned it down. I did. Well, okay. I, I was like, when Janelle's doing <laughs> uh, yeah like but like the priority the priority yeah. should be getting you guys We're wanting yeah, to but get if they want guys. us then tell like i feel like if they actually want us then let us know that it's going to be all ogs or whatever exactly I'm not, yes i'm not yeah. going to go against freaking david who's played right. one day a big brother yeah. and like, yes you know i've done multiple seasons like i don't want some david taking me out like what fun is that yeah like, literally put, put people in there that have played big brother before that are like well no like that should know. be the core of the cast is you guys stephanie should have been exactly. on the show exactly boston rob you go through well, a yeah. love to play with boston rob tyson yeah. you know parvati yeah. um yeah ethan like and if you can't get those people then maybe you should hold off and do the show at another time when right you can. right that's what the draw of the show should be Second well, thing, the, the problem was with that, Jack, was the casting. And I don't mind blasting their casting because I thought I would have done it if they would have talked to me differently and treated me differently. And if they would have made sure they would be OG people on yeah. that, I would I would be able to yeah. work with. So if I, I know I'm going that, against Rachel and right. Suri and all these other women that are from my same time era and like Parvati you know, I, I would be way more enticed to do it. Yeah. I would be like, I cannot miss this opportunity. I have to do it. Even if you don't even pay me, I'll do it. I don't yeah. care. Yeah, exactly. So that's number one. Number two, I think the partner algorithm is really bad TV. Cause I think oh, if you're making horrible. a TV show, you want to tell stories. So if someone yes. has a partner, the whole story, there's a story between the two of them. Yes. You just shuffle the deck every episode and you don't know, you're not invested in the people. You're not invested in who's working with who or any of that stuff, quite frankly. I know. And they didn't put Josh Martinez, which I love him. <laughs> yeah. He would have been great him. on that. He brings oh. so much drama. He's loud and annoying. Like if I ever did the challenge, I would want him as my partner. Yeah. He would be so good. <laughs> So, uh, yeah, we only got so much time here. Let me ask you guys about The Amazing Race. Because yeah. that's, that's the only show you guys have been on before the this only one. one. Yeah, I know. Crazy. We've never played Big Brother together. Um, but we've Missed done... opportunity, CBS. I know. <laughs> but we've done Snake in the Grass and The Amazing Race together. And Price is Right. Yeah, but that doesn't count. That's like, you know, just for It was for, for charity. Whatever. Yeah. But... Um, but Amazing Race was super fun. I wish Janelle was my partner on Amazing Race. I mean, I love my sister. I know I really love Brittany, but like, I wish I could have been partners with Janelle as well. Yeah, that would have been so awesome. Oh my gosh. Yeah, yeah we, I feel like it was like that season of Amazing Race was so fun. And the cast, I thought they did a good job of casting some fun personalities. Um, like, we played with Rupert on Amazing Race. I mean, like, I who so would have thought? Yeah, so, so fun. Yeah, I mean, it's just like, I thought it was a fun show. Like, it was just, and I thought that the way it was edited together, like, it, the, the watching it was fun to watch. Um, it was a great, I liked it. I had fun. Rachel, the Amazing Race is good and fun. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah the Amazing Race is good and fun. It was finally good and fun on that season. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, uh, that honestly, again, I'll interject an opinion here. You know, I've been watching reality TV a long time. We talked a little bit about how a lot of these shows have declined recently. That season of The Amazing Race is my favorite season of any reality show from like the past five to ten really? years. Really? Yeah. Oh, yay! I thought I mean, it was amazing. I know, yeah. Janelle, you didn't get to be on it. You weren't getting get a whole lot of airtime. Yeah, it, like I was just like, oh my God, really? Um, I... <laughs> You know, I definitely prefer Big Brother over Amazing Race. Absolutely. Um, that's just me, though. I'm just a Big Brother person. So I like studio lighting. I like my bed. I don't like to jump around too much. I like I like to sit in a bed and strategize and talk. That's my skill. Okay. <laughs> so now you've got Snake in the Grass, this new show that's been on for a few weeks, and you guys are going to be on an episode with Stephanie and Sari yes. on Monday, August 29th, 11 p.m. Eastern Time. Can't wait to watch it. I spoke with Stephanie and Sari last week, and they're great. They're hilarious. And I've, so I've known, cool. I'm friends with Stephanie. I know her, um, and she's awesome. But I was curious because Stephanie ha does not watch a lot of reality TV. She did not right. know who you guys were. She did, but I knew who she was right away. I was like, oh my yeah. God, Stephanie LaGrosa. 
<laughs> Were you yeah. fangirling? <laughs> I was. Oh my God. Yeah. I'm a huge fan of hers. I'm a huge Survivor fan. I mean, I've, I've never missed a season. I've watched some of the seasons two or three times, some of my favorite seasons. So, and all of my favorite seasons are seasons they've been on, like the fans versus favorites, heroes versus villains. So I'm like, yeah, pretty huge fan. Yeah, same. I I got on the beach and saw them and like jaw dropped. I was just yes. like, oh my God, I'm going to be hanging out with these girls for 36 hours. Like it was insane to me. I just had like mind blown kind of moment where it was like Janelle, Sari, Stephanie, like what am I doing? I'm like, this is so bomb because I didn't know who they were. Yeah. I didn't know. I was figuring it was going to be guys with us too. And I was like four yeah. women and it's us. Yeah. Are you kidding me? And we get to be a part of this. Oh my God. Yeah. It was such a fun experience, Jack. It was like, it was one of the best shows that I've filmed ever. I would say. Me too. The Yule episode was phenomenal. I thought it that was, was great. great. I think that was the so fun. dynamic of this show is super interesting. I've been really into it so far and I'm so excited to watch you guys on. Yes. Rachel, when did you find out that you're going to be on this with Janelle? When I saw her on the beach, we were like, I literally, I feel like Janelle and I are friends. Like we talk and, you know, we keep up with each other. And, um, but like, you know, when you get called for these things, especially because it was, um, it wasn't like a big brother or amazing race. I would have reached out if it was big brother, but I don't think we like necessarily thought to like, you know, reach out or anything. So as soon as I saw her on the beach, I was just like, Oh my God, Janelle is here. Like freaking yeah. out. Uh, yeah. I didn't think there was going to be other big brother people there because yeah. the way they spun it to me was just like, it's just a random people. It could be other reality sh uh, people from other shows. And I was like, okay. Like, Thanks. and I didn't hear any buzz about it. Like, usually there's like spoilers and stuff. So if I didn't hear any buzz, I'm definitely not calling people on this one. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, yeah, same. And also like they told us it was a treasure hunt. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so like, I didn't even know what to, I mean, except that it's like the producers of Naked and Afraid. I literally thought that we would be dropped in the middle of like Costa Rica, maybe getting naked. Like they were going to just be like, oh, <laughs> You're surprise. So crazy. Like, I know. Oh my God. <laughs> I had no idea what to think. <laughs> so Sari and Stephanie like noticed each other at the airport. And then they were, mm -hmm. you guys were like uh, sequestered for what, like a week or something like something that? Something like that. Yeah. 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 And so they, 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 they both thought that they were going to be like, there was going to be like a whole cast of survivor people. Oh, okay. from just oh, they saw cool. each other and then they were yeah. sequestered. And what do you guys do when you're sequestered? You just like watch movies or just watch movies and eat have yeah. room service. I I woke up every morning and did yoga because I was still in the mind frame of like, oh my god, we're gonna literally be going into the jungles. Like I don't know what we're doing. I brought snake boots. Okay, Jack. Like, <laughs> like, like I was prepared. I. I had no idea what they were going to do to us. So I woke up every morning and I was like doing yoga. I had a routine. I was like doing yoga. I was going to do jumping jacks in the room. I was like, and it was like crazy because I we had balconies. And so I would like try to spy and see if I could see anyone. You know, I was like trying to figure out what was going on, but nothing. I got nothing. I saw, so I did see Malcolm one day and I was like, oh my God. We're playing with Malcolm. <laughs> <laughs> Another one. If they're going to yeah. do the challenge all stars, he'd be perfect. No, yeah, they, they, they just didn't challenge you right. I mean, like, yeah. yeah. And it would have been horrible for me to show up there. I would have been targeted immediately. Yeah. And, yeah. yeah like, no, whatever. this show's better. This show's going to be way better than yeah. challenge USA. Yeah. Um, okay. We only got a few more minutes here. So let's see what else we can fit through here. So, you guys, uh, Sari was a big fan of yours. Did you know that? Yes. Yeah. Well, when yeah. we saw her, she was like, oh, my God, Janelle, Rachel. <laughs> <laughs> and I had never met them before, which is interesting. Um, I've been to a couple of whatever, like the, the charity events, and I've met some of the really big, well-known Survivor players, but I've never met Sari. What do you guys think of them? Oh, oh my gosh. They're love. Amazing. Stephanie love. made me a little nervous because she's more reserved, you know, but Suri's yeah. so open and loving and kind. She's just like, hey. Yeah. <laughs> I feel like Stephanie, before I had met her, like kind of intimidating, kind of yes, a mystique exactly. to her because she hasn't really exposed herself. Like right. she's now yeah. kind of, she's going to do more podcasts now. She's on social media, but 
for like the last 12 years. I know. She had yeah. been kind of not very public and a lot of people hadn't met her before. And you saw like, if you watch her, you know, she's a really tough chick. And so yes. like, yep. I had no idea what she was actually going to be like. And then when I met her, I'm like, oh my gosh, she is so sweet. She's got such an infectious, fun personality. Yeah. 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 We have a lot of fun. The, I think the yes. episode, you'll watch it and everyone will watch and think it's just like a lot of fun. It's very, it's going to be very entertaining. It's a lot of fun meeting. I mean, just like the four of us. I mean, I think, <laughs> we had a great time. I mean, yeah. I got to literally go camping with Suri and Stephanie from Survivor yeah. and Rachel. <laughs> I mean, who can say they've done that? Who? Do you want to go on Survivor now? They, no, they've convinced me that I would suck at it because <laughs> I did it and I thought it was pure hell. And they were like, you know, this is called glamping. Okay. In Survivor, yeah, you glamping. literally have nothing. You don't yeah. even have fire. Okay. They don't give you matches. They don't give you this, this, and that. There's no coffee. Like there's nothing. <laughs> Rachel, can you explain how the show works to the listeners? Yeah. So four people are dropped into the Costa Rican jungle for 36 hours. And one of the people is a snake. So the snake's objective is to, to kind of like foil the game. They want to make sure that we don't, the rest of the people don't find clues. And the snake, their whole objective is to win a hundred thousand dollar cash prize. Awesome. It's gonna be fun to watch. Janelle, if you could change one thing about Big Brother, what would it be? If I could change one thing about Big Brother, hmm. I would honestly change the live feeds. I think they should go away. And I Agreed. think that it should be an edited show. So there can be no more witch hunts for these people and you can't ruin anyone's life. And, um, you know, the justice warriors will just have to, you know, do that from the edited version of the show. And if you want to do that, that's fine. But like, you know, there's a lot of twisting of words and things. And I feel like yeah. a lot of this will go away if there just was no live feed. I, yeah. I agree with you, Janelle. However, I think Big Brother without live feeds is not Big Brother. And as much as I agree with everything you just said, I I would be so sad if we couldn't have live feeds because I love watching HOH's endurance comps play out. I love I, watching when the house guests actually strategize. Like I do Yeah, and I get that, that, but I feel like with the way the world's going, you're not gonna be able to play true. Big Brother. You, yeah, I, I want people to play Big Brother. So yeah. to do that, you're going to have to get rid of the live feeds. Rachel, you work in casting. Did I nail my audition here? Oh, which one? For, where are you going? I don't know. I, like, are you going, auditioning for Big Brother? <laughs> no, I don't know. I don't. I don't. I don't know. I'm just wondering. Like, am I cast worthy after you talk oh, to absolutely. me for a half hour? Yes, absolutely. I feel like we can. There's a few shows we can throw you on. But I'll be honest. Like. If you have a choice, you should go on Snake in the Grass because it's the yes. best show ever. It is so fun. It's so fun. And there's clues. And I love how through the editing, we learn things that the snake will do. Like, I love when they stop it and Bobby's like, oh, snakes will uh, try to deceive other people or whatever. And I just love that, like, I love how it's edited and the, the videography is amazing. The people like the production team was amazing like it's it just, really was yeah everything about, i can't say anything like about the show but it was just amazing like that's the best adjective because it was amazing i know someone's watching i said it last time i want to play this show put me on season two let's do yes. it yes <laughs> <laughs> so fun okay anything else that we should be on the lookout for you guys want to tease or preview anything about this episode yeah, no. I mean, it's just super fun. It was super fun. It was yeah. hands down one of the best reality TV experience I've done thus far. And I absolutely loved doing it. It was it was just a blast. Totally. Yes. A total blast. Same. So, I think it's if, if people will just enjoy watching the episode. I think that's the thing that, like, they're going to really enjoy it. It's a little mystery. You know, good gameplay. A lot of fun. 
awesome. It's going to be great to watch. It's on Monday, August 29th, 11 p.m. Eastern time on USA Network. Set your DVRs. If it's on a little late for you, you can watch it the next day. This is going to be an awesome episode. I can't wait to watch it. Do you guys want to promote your social media handles or anything else that you're working on while you're here? Yeah, I, you know, I did a reality TV course. If anyone's interested on auditioning, camera, you know, building us how to tell a story and all that stuff, I, I sell, I created a digital course. So if you ever want that, it's pinned on my Twitter. All my handles are Janelle Prezina. So it's, I'm pretty easy to find. <laughs> Great. And all mine are Rachel. Well, actually, no, on Twitter, I'm Rachel E. Riley. On Instagram, I'm Rachel E. Riley Viegas. And yeah, I'll, sure, I'll uh, say, please follow me on TikTok. I'm thirsty. No, I like, <laughs> literally, though, I'm, I have like the worst TikTok following. <laughs> it's embarrassing. I'm like, why do I only have like 800 people that follow me on TikTok? I don't know, but that's what it is. So, oh my God. <laughs> Go to my TikTok. <laughs> oh, you two are so great. Thank you so much for coming on. This is a lot of fun. Yeah, thanks yeah, for, thank having, you for us. having us. All right, y'all. That concludes our conversation today with Rachel Riley and Janelle Perzina. It was an absolute blast getting to talk with them about Big Brother, Amazing Race, some of the other stuff they're working on, and their new show, Snake in the Grass. You guys aren't going to want to miss that episode again. August 29th, 11 p.m. Eastern Time, 10 Central Time. I'm on Central Time. And that is on USA Network. You guys can follow me on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, at Jack Vita Show, all one word. And we're going to have more content coming soon. I am up today. This is my first day on my new job as a full time baseball writer at Sports Illustrated slash Fan Nations website fastball so i'm going to be doing a lot of baseball content on there you guys can see i'll be tweeting some of the links out some of the stuff i'm working on um you guys are should enjoy it and we're going to have a lot more podcast content soon i'm going to see if we can potentially bring these guys back on from snake in the grass and talk about their episode after it airs if not maybe we'll have them on again sometime down the road so make sure you guys subscribe to the Jack Vita show and log on to my website, jackvita.com for more content. And until our next episode, I'm Jack Vita, bring in the dancing lobsters. <laughs>